you know, there are so many new things on the horizon, AI, etc. and what not. What should an in Indian investor watch out for uh, when you're looking at technology in the new year? Well, I believe the starting point should be to kind of really take that leap of faith that this is India's decade. Uh, that to me should be essentially the starting point. Decade. Which, decade, <laughs> which is that I clearly believe that a lot has happened in terms of technology and technology adoption. Mm -hmm. Uh, but my view is that this is becoming more and more universal, more and more ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. uh, you have different segments of the country, of the economy, of the society adopting technology. And that, I think, is doing a lot of good. I'm, I'm not pushing you to name stocks, but just in terms of interesting businesses, could you name companies or interesting businesses where you think that you are seeing some potential? And again, I mean, this is caveat. This yes. is, these are not stock calls at all. These are businesses that Nilesh may be finding interesting as you're doing your own homework. Yeah, so I think in some of them we are invested, but in terms of spaces, opportunities, uh, you have uh, fast-growing online broking business, okay, which tomorrow will essentially help retail investors to channelize their savings into investments, so which is catalyzing the change in India from a nation of savers to a nation of investors. Okay. Um, so and there are some of these brokers like the, like the angel ones of the world or the others right. who, may, who may live. That's, yeah. that's, that's right. Okay. Uh, okay. Some of them are essentially helping um, the uninsured to buy insurance products. That's okay. policy buy, yeah. so, so that comes. Some of them are helping individuals to access credit uh, from banks, from NBFCs. Okay. So, so that I think is important. Um, some of them are identifying even some very ordinary um, or very uh, small size like tea vendors, for example, and trying to capture their cash flows because with now with the online payments, with GPAYs, all these payments happening online, you are able to pretty much track and understand the cash flows, which earlier was not there because payments were being done in cash. Businesses like food delivery, online food delivery, uh -huh. quick commerce, these are businesses which I think in the last few quarters, many of these businesses have made very important progress like in terms of platform fee i know every time i'm ordering suddenly my my bill breakup says right. there is that 3 rupee or 4 rupee platform so fee that's, and it's here so that's pricing power yeah okay yeah. Uh, when we look at a consumer company like mm -hmm. say an hul where suddenly input prices go up yeah. and they hike prices of soaps and shampoos we don't crib about it yeah. we call it as pricing power mm -hmm. but when it's a platform fee uh, it gets questioned <laughs> but nevertheless Pricing power is getting manifested yes. and that's the yes. strength yes. of the platform mm. or the strength of the brand, mm. uh, whichever way you call it. Yeah. Uh, if this sustains, you would easily call this a moat. Mm. If this mm. sustains, if this pricing power sustains, if yeah. you can ward off competition, that's yeah. what a, a moat is all about. So you're beginning to see this in a way getting exhibited. Uh -huh. And if this can be sustained, then these will become hugely more valuable businesses.